It is 8 o'clock. It is Tuesday night. Do you know where DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it is the DJ Roundtable Show. And as always, we're here on Twitch Live. And if you're not catching us a live episode, we record this and put this on YouTube. And I try to drop it on Mondays at noon. And we have a lot of great DJs here. One thing with YouTube, if you guys can do me a favor, I appreciate it. Uh, help me slay the YouTube algorithm. Make sure you smash the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And make sure you hit the bell icon. And one more thing, share it with a friend or two. Tell another DJ about the show. It's even in the uh, the title song for here. We watch it on YouTube. Um, it is fun with that. Uh, and also, I want to thank you all for tuning in. If you're watching this live or you're watching us on YouTube. Either way, I appreciate it, and we all appreciate you coming in, tuning in. We have a great panel of experts. We have a great panel of people here. Um, we are missing a couple. Hopefully, they will be able to come in. And also, uh, we have a couple newer faces. Sean's been on the uh, episode before, and a new episode, uh, a new face tonight. This episode is Alex from Iowa. Um he is a great Hispanic DJ uh, there in Iowa, but he does all kinds of events, quinceaneras to weddings. And the cool thing, his setup is kind of close to my white setup. Him and I share a lot of things. He's like my uh, my uh, my brother from another mother. Uh, but also, again, he also shares stuff with Jeff. He shares stuff with a few other DJs. But it's, it's one of the great things that we have great people here, and I'm glad that you're here to watch. Uh, Mike, one quick thing for you. Uh, Donovan, I don't know if you know he is on YouTube. He's a truck driver and a, a karaoke guy and a wonderful DJ. He's going to be coming on to the DJ Roundtable hopefully next week, and he is from Pennsylvania, so you will have your wish to have someone from the Pennsylvania area. He's closer to the Philly area. He's not the uh, northeastern Pennsylvania area where you're at, but he is a fellow Pennsylvania, you know, resident, and he's got some great information. Hopefully, uh, he will will share with us everything and tell us what's going on and his uh, fun uh, information. Uh, first thing first, Alex, if you want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself very quickly, and also uh, kind of again, I alluded what you do, but uh, kind of some uh, unique things that you look to do out there in Iowa. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Uh... My actual first name is Javier, but uh, a lot of people have a lot of issues uh, saying that. So I went with my middle name, which is Alexander, so then I shorted it to Alex. So uh, I'm Alex Modis here. I currently live in Susana, Iowa, which is the corner uh, of Iowa close to South Dakota, Nebraska, and Minnesota. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm a bilingual DJ. I mainly do bilingual events, uh, not so much. Uh, full-blown uh, Latin or Hispanic events uh, anymore. I decided to focus more on weddings. Um, I was born and raised in El Salvador, Central America. It's a very tiny country uh, that um, fits in Rhode Island, and you still have room to spare if you put it if you put El Salvador inside of Rhode Island. But um, moved to the U.S. in 2000. Um, been here since. Um, my passion uh, started in 97 uh, when I went to a nightclub and I fell in love with the power of one person has over a crowd. And, and I'm like, I want to be that, that guy. So started working with uh, some friends. Um, I got to work on a nightclub doing uh, afternoons for, for youth where it was uh, 17 and under, no alcoholic beverage or anything like that. It was Saturdays from 2 p.m. to to 4 p.m. So two hours nonstop, uh, you know, just dance music. Then uh, I did a small internship at a radio station in El Salvador before I moved to the U.S. Um, met a friend of mine when I when I moved to the U.S. and then he uh, showed me more about the uh, mobile DJ and and we were doing full blown Hispanic events. Um, and then uh, in 2005. I met my wife and she was DJing too. Um, and then we, you know, one thing led to another, we got married, uh, was, then we started combining our efforts. Um, and then in uh, 2013, uh, we started with 
uh, the new name, which is Nota DJ Services. Um, and we do uh, weddings, uh, like I said, and, and here and there a few school dances and um, some Hispanic events, but not, not so many. Uh, we do the whole shebang from photo booth, up lighting, uh, whole sparks, uh, dancing on the clouds, monograms. So uh, we do most of most of those uh, services that, ev that what everybody else does too. Um, but yeah, we are Timo three. Uh, my other two guys they do it kind of like part time. Uh, so one of them is more busy than the other. But uh, we we're like a small family. We get we take care of each other and. Yeah, we love what we do. Thank you, thank and thank you for coming on tonight. And again, look for I, I know talking to you, you have a little, you have you've done some cancaneras, you know, you have that heritage and stuff like that. And it, it's great having you on here and having your expertise. And not just you know, uh, again, over here it does weddings, but having you know multiple, especially multiple lingual services and so forth and so on. And we've all done that. Uh, we've done uh, you know mixed events that you know you're doing multiple languages it could be more than spanish it could be polish it could be russian it could be whatever the other language is and it's nice having another person out here who does that uh the nice advantage also you have is being bilingual that you can speak in spanish and you can speak in english and you can communicate that in both ways it's a very very positive thing yeah. um for i also want to say uh it's kind of cool that you know again coming from another country coming up here is really cool i know sean had to go from wisconsin down to uh down to Georgia, and uh, he did a, a, a great travel. You did a little further travel than him, but uh, <laughs> it's fun that, you know, we have D two DJs now here that who have moved pretty far away from each other. I think I, I think you beat him a little bit, Alex, like a little bit by a few miles, but... <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> just, just a little bit, just, just a little bit. And it's great having some great DJs on here. Uh, we look forward to having you uh, on here and, and stopping by and, and talking with stuff. Um, Absolutely. First thing first, I want to also uh, welcome back uh, uh, Jordan. I know last week he was not feeling well, and Taylor's right there. Jordan, I'm glad to see you're on the bench. You're feeling better, uh, and that you're back here uh, suffering through uh, <laughs> the fun of DJing and having fun in the show. So welcome back. Glad to see. And as well as your lovely wife as well here. And again, we have a lot of great DJs, Jeff, uh, Matt, and Hunter here. Uh, again, we are missing a couple, but that's okay. We have a couple others, and that way we can go on with everything. Uh, we always got people working, always people going on. And then DJ Brentley, I know he is under the weather, and hopefully he feels better sometime soon. Um, he has a little bit of an injury, and uh, I, again, I, I know what it's like. It sucks. Um, I have a bad knee, and I can't do everything I can do when I was 30, and now I'm, you know, uh, in my early 50s. It, 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 it sucks, but all we can do is what we can do and have fun with what we can have fun with. With that said, let's continue on with the show. Uh, first thing first, and this, this is going to actually go to our first uh, new DJ here, Alex here. Um, when you are setting up your gear and you're trying to figure out how to set something up you're putting your you're using a booth or a table or whatever you're doing and you're putting gear out there you're you're setting up your room you're setting up your area do you have an idea do you go to like google maps or do you if you've been to the place before you have pictures of the room empty and you kind of figure out in your mind's eye how to set that up or do you start putting stuff up and you say hey you know what this will work better over here. This will work better over there. And then listen to the room with sound and say, hey, the speakers need another 10 or 15 feet to the left or right. It, how do you set up a room so it, you get it exactly the way you want it to? Is it you know beforehand or you do it the day of or at the event? Um, a little bit of both. Uh, so what I usually do, um, I use Vivo for, uh, for my planning app. So uh, I ask. Uh, the couples to uh, give me a layout if they can. If not, when I meet with them on the very last uh, meeting that I have with them, I usually, if I'm doing it in person, bring my laptop, pull up the uh, the venue, uh, set up layout, and then we talk about the pros and cons on on where I that should be. Uh, ultimately, I tell them that it is their decision, but in order for me to provide the service that they're looking for. I will need to be set up this way. Um, most of the times, uh, most of the venues that I go to, um, I am uh, very familiar with. 
So uh, when I have my meeting, I tell them, hey, this is the best way that we have found out that um, setting up, having the DJ in this area, you know, for flow, for, for everything. Um, I had uh, uh, an instance about three, four weeks ago uh, that I went to a venue and we talk about um, the layout. We couple and I, we agreed where I was gonna set up at the time that I showed up uh, to the venue the venue manager decided to move things around. So I'm like, uh, this is not gonna work uh, because she wanted me to be uh, close to uh, to a very tra uh, heavy traffic area. And I'm like, uh, away from the from the dance floor. And I, and I told them like, I would love to make this work, but this is not gonna serve the purpose of having a DJ here. So, uh, at the end, we compromise, we move things around, and then we make things work. But usually, I like to I like to get or be prepared before I get to the venue. Um, if it is a brand new venue, I do my homework, check pictures online, and everything. But I always try to to be there an extra forty five to an hour uh, uh, before I'm, I'm where I'm usually get there. So this way, I can figure out where the um, plugins are the best layout for, for the uh, for my equipment and see, let's say, how many uplighting, if I'm doing uplighting, how many uplighting I'm going to need, if I need to pull more, less, and so on and so forth. So, uh, but no, I, I try to do my homework a little bit ahead of time. I, I, I try to do the same thing. I try to, Google's great for when people put pictures up. When they put those pictures up of themselves at a venue, you know, eating or whatever, I'm looking around behind them or they take pictures of family photos in front of us. Oh, there's this here. There's this here. And if it's especially a venue I've been to in a while or I haven't been to, it helps out tre uh, tremendously with that stuff. And it, it those photos are, are a goldmine of information. And that's also another reason why I post photos onto Google Maps is my setup there so people can see that, one, I've been there, and two, they can see what it looks like where my, my vision is how a room should look for mm -hmm. that event and how we can change it for them too and give them options. So I'm, I'm yes. I, again, I, I kind of do the same thing. Um, oh, Dwayne's coming in now. Get Dwayne in here. All right. We got Ohio now. We got, we got, there's, there he is. Dwayne, how you doing, sir? Glad to see you're here. Doing good. Good. Uh, Alex is here. Alex is new to the room as well. You remember Sean from last time? He is here as well uh, from the great state of Georgia. Alex is from the great state of Iowa. And, of course, we have a lot of our normal uh, fun people here too. So I'm going to go next to uh, Jordan and Taylor. When you guys set up, and, again, I know you guys do more than just DJing. You guys have you know a little bit more. You have you know tons more stuff than DJing. But when you set up your DJ area, do you know before going into the room how you're going to set it up? Or do you kind of look at the room that day with everything in there, especially if you add other enhancements to the room and you change your setup and you need to move things around and listen to it and kind of tweak it? Or do you just go, hey, we've been here multiple times. We do the same thing and put everything in the same area. Depending on what it is, if it's just DJ and we've never been there before, we definitely show up early and kind of try to figure it out and definitely have been like, you know, pointed to a receptacle in the middle of the dance floor before and, you know, definitely nicely explained why that wasn't going to work. Um, or like, you know, they kind of put you in front of a high traffic area and you got to move them, but, um, Mostly just speaker placement. As long as speaker placement is good, I don't really mind being off in the corner. But my speakers aren't going to be in the corner. And I will argue that until they're not in the corner, I guess. But uh, other than that, like if we're doing decor and stuff, we definitely know where everything's going. Because, you know, we've gone over way more than just where the DJ is going to be. And one of the things I'm, I'm sure, and Mikey Mike's saying that, yeah, he knows over 20 years plus of services uh, being a mobile DJ. Most venue owners do not understand, uh, have no clue about music. I would also add no clue about sound at all, how sound works. And they, they put you in corners and sometimes they expect sound to go around corners, like 90 degree corners. 
And it's like, no, sound does not do that. Sound bounces off of things and uh, can enhance things. But have you, uh, again, real quickly before I, I go on a little bit, I want to see a show of hands. How many people here have done a wedding or a party or whatever at a venue that the outlet is in the floor and you go look at the outlet and you're like sketchy as all heck? Yeah. <laughs> That is uh, that is scary sometimes. So some of the ones are really good, but you open that cover up and you're like full of dust. And uh, Adrian E. He's raised his hand. Hey, Adrian, what's going on? Uh, you see dust, dirt, dust bunnies, fuzz balls, hair, whatnot, because it's on the floor. And what is on the floor? And they mop over with a mop. And it's like sometimes, um, you know, the best thing to have. Uh, where did I put it? Oh. Tracy must be using it. A uh, can of air to have with you. I have one in my bag with the, the straw in it. And I would blow out those floor um, plugs just to make sure uh, it's clean. Uh, Mikey Mike said he had one under a stage. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's got to suck. I, I, and <laughs> I'm going to go back to Jordan and Taylor real quickly. Um, have you guys ever had that, you know, a, a, a sucky outlet anywhere? I was just going to say, you guys ever have them where they're, like, up on the ceiling? Yeah. We have a place like that, too, uh, where they're, all of them, because it's an old castle, are up above your head. Yeah, who, who's the one above this on the ceiling? Who's the one on the ceiling? I see. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Matt's got that. Yeah, so those are interesting places when you run into that where they have an outlet on the ceiling or high up on a wall. It's like, and I, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm like six one, so I'm not a short guy, and uh, you know it, it's like you're reaching up there, and it, it's like you know up in like the six foot range, the seven foot range that you're like reaching to go go up there. I'm not, you know, it, it's it's one of the things that um, it's not the uh, highest thing, but it's like man, and it's like why even outlet way up there? Are you is this play area flood or something? It's like I don't want to say. Adrian said yeah, ceiling. Uh, Another one, I had them both shaking his head. Yeah, floor, ceiling, and high up on the wall. It's always interesting. And I, I'll leave you guys on this one real quickly. The, the wedding I did a couple weeks ago, the uh, outlet actually had gaffer tape by to hold the ga to hold the outlet into the wall, and the outlet was worn. So when you put your out, when you plug, plugged into it, when you put it into the outlet, the um, plug would slide right out instantaneously. So I had to take the the uh, uh, parts of the outlet, the, the plug, and actually spread it out a little bit so it fit in there so it wouldn't slide out. But she's like, oh, yeah, DJs always use uh, tape to hold the outlet uh, together. I'm like, that means you need to replace the outlet. You need an electrician to come in here and, and fix it. There's something wrong. There's not, you know. So I'm going to go to Hunter. Hunter, <laughs> I, I said you, ha you had it underneath the stage. Uh, is there, When you set up, I'm going to go back to the original question. When you set up an area, do you know what you're going to do beforehand, or do you show up and then say, "Hey, uh, look at the room and kind of decide I'm going to do this, do this, and then tweak it as needed"? Well, I do. I look at both. So if there's pictures on their social media of where I'll be setting up, then I take a look. I imagine where I'm going to be placing the speakers, my DJ booth. And everything beforehand, but if there's no pictures, I just have to wait until I get to the venue to to see where I'm setting up. And I'm going to follow up with a follow up question now. That this is the follow up question for tonight: is what's the worst outlet you ran into on the floor or on the floor of the stage? At, on the floor of the stage, that middle, that middle school dance. Um, I was DJing at Carolina Forest Community Church, and they had a outlet on the stage on the floor even when i'm djing night to shine even the xlr outputs are on the floor of the stage this is why and having a can power. this is why having a can of air is nice because you can blow stuff out and the straw is plastic that doesn't conduct electricity so you don't want to put anything metal in there until you at least clean it out that's <laughs> that's the thing mikey mike says the worst outlet in the room uh the worst is no outlet in the room you had to set up in very true. And I, I'm going to do another follow-up on that. I was watching a DJ. Um, he had a, a partial wall where the power was on the other side of the wall. He ran the uh, power cords up and over the wall 
and just put a piece of tape on across the top of the wall versus running the cables down and around the corner into his booth. And I'm like, eh, yeah, it's not how I would do it, but I, I guess you do what you do, you know? <laughs> uh, Jeff, I know uh, in the great uh, state of uh, North Carolina, uh, they have uh, some uh, fun installs there, and you've done some great uh, installs. And by the way, I, I see a lot of your gig log coming back up on your new page. Uh, I've been thumbing thumbs up for you and giving thumbs up. And make sure if you're watching out there, uh, Jeff does have a new YouTube channel because of the fact that he had some problems. So please make sure you go and follow his YouTube channel and give him lots of love, give him lots of thumbs up, and uh, make sure you comment in there, help grow his YouTube channel again. But what is, you know, when you set up your setup, when you walk, do you uh, walk into the room and say, okay, fine, good, this is how I'm going to set up? Or do you know beforehand through pictures or some other information, you, you walk the property before, something that you figure out before you walk in that day and set stuff up, how do you want the room to feel? Plus, after you set stuff up, do you move, move things? Do you tweak it? Do you say, hey, this sounds okay, but it would sound better if I did this or did that. Yeah, I, I'm kind of like everybody else. I will usually stalk a um, social media page or just go on the web uh, to find any pictures. Um, you know, if you're lucky, you'll get some uh, images where a DJ has set up. So you'll kind of get an idea of previous setups. And quite often it's up to the venue, you know, they have a specific area that they will allow you to set up in. Uh, it's usually, you know, pretty close to an outlet. Um, so, you know, it, it, it varies. Uh, I usually, if I've never been to a venue, if it's a big enough venue that they have enough events there, I figured that they have run through it with, you know, dozens, if not hundreds of other DJs. So I'm not going to, you know, confront them or, or bother them. I'll just show up and uh, nicely ask, you know, where shall I set up and, uh, you know, get on, get in their good graces early on. But um, you know, uh, if it's a small venue that is relatively new, I may check it out first if I can't find any photos or at least give a phone call and find out, you know, you know where they uh, set up and how far a run to the nearest uh, 20 amp or at least 15 amp outlet is. So, um, yeah, and the uh, the worst uh, the worst outlet uh, was probably at the Marriott uh, of all places. They have a huge ballroom, but the uh, the power is through the wall. And they have two uh, round uh, tubes in the wall, one on each side of the stage. And they both go, they, they run, unfortunately, a 14 gauge, you know, all, all the way from their plug, you know, and through those holes into the corners of both stage or the, the both corners of the stage. Uh, the problem is those 14 gauge are very, very bad. It's just they're, they're beat up. They're, you know, first of all, they're 14 gauge. Um, I prefer 12. I, I carry 12 with me. Um, and I, when I went back into that area where they're plugged in on both sides of the wall back back there, it was the exact thing, exact thing you were talking about. The the those uh, 12 or 14 gauge uh, drops were plugged in and held up by duct tape. So I unplugged one and ran a 12 and ran it through and they asked me what I was doing. You know, why are you doing that? You know, and, and I, I challenged them. I'm like, well, do you, how many, uh, you know, how many amps is this going to, is this going to handle? You know, <laughs> and they, they couldn't answer that. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to be safe and I'm going to run a 12. And uh, so, you know, it, that was, uh, that was pretty bad. And it, it, it's the same thing. Those, those things that get plugged in a lot, get very uh, weak, very loose, and you just have to deal with it. So they do make a product that uh, that you can unscrew the screw of the outlet and screw this product on there and it clamps on your um, your your plug. So that is that is an option, but I don't carry one with me. So Maybe, maybe we should start carrying that stuff because I, I yeah. know the prongs on the on a, on a, um, actual plug, sometimes, you know, again, we got to adjust and they get bent in a little bit. You know, it, we always get a little adjustments. But, you know, when you got to bow them out so much that it looks like a U, uh, you know, a V versus straight, uh, that says that you got some dangerous uh, wiring going on there. Uh, and then, you know, the, the thing is that I would always ask someone, uh, and this is a electrician question. I'm not an electrician. I don't claim to be one on TV either. Um, but the thing is that uh, I did learn this from my father-in-law, who was a uni electrician, uh, resistance. 
And the the thicker the cable, the less resistance you have, so you can transmit power easier over more distance, there's less heat and less problems. So that's why a 12 gauge, a thicker cable is better than a 14 gauge or a 16 gauge or an 18 gauge or a 20 gauge. Or if you really go live dangerously, you get the little white uh, extension cords, like for Christmas lights, <laughs> run Watch some stuff up there. There's, <laughs> there's a video on YouTube and stuff like that with bands using them and them catching on fire. Speaking of fire, <laughs> I'm gonna go to Georgia <laughs> and to Sean there, who uh, I hope doesn't use white Christmas tree uh, extension cords, but <laughs> he was in Wisconsin. I get, I gotta give him that, you know. I know some of those guys in Wisconsin, you know. But in all seriousness, when you show up at a venue, um, when you set up and stuff like that, what do you do? You 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 know beforehand, or do you show up day of and go? okay, I'm going to set up here and this is where I've set up at and this is how I'm going to set everything. Or do I do you tweak it? Do you say, okay, I'm here, but I think I need to move the speakers left to right more. I need to move the booth up more. I need to do stuff. What do you do? Yeah, so, I mean, a little bit of both. I love to do in person. Just that way you can meet with the venue, hand them some business cards, kind of do that networking side of things, plus actually see the space, See, yes, you can see in photos where your outlets and stuff are, but photos are deceptive when it comes to trying to see how far something is, uh, especially like we do a lot of the special effects lighting in that. So I really like to go in person if possible to actually see the space in person. But we also do a lot of Airbnb weddings here. Uh, I'm in the mountains. So some of my weddings, even though they're 60 miles away, it's a two and a half hour drive through the mountains. Um, so a little bit of both, uh, but we're always, we show up about four hours before the event starts normally. So plenty of time to walk around, check things out and get familiar with the space. And, you know, that's, that's a key ki uh, thing there is building those relationships with managers of facilities and having that, uh, Tracy and I were just this past Saturday, uh, in the, in the afternoon, a, a venue that we're preferred vendor at. And uh, we were meeting a client there. Tracy was walking through with them. And then afterwards, we met, we were at uh, Starbucks going through the music. But Tracy was there, uh, and, and, you know, the representative from the facility was all happy that she was there. And it's it's a small thing like that, especially when you have a rapport with, you have a relationship with, meeting the client there, going through some walkthrough, and just helping them out. Because we as professionals do this all the time. Versus them, they're getting married hopefully once, maybe it's their second time at the most, um, or they're having a party, and they want to do things right. And, and walking into a facility, even a facility, especially a facility you know, if you can sit down and talk to you know, your client and talk to the venue manager and walk through things with them so you have an idea, so you have a rounded idea. Because I don't know about you, but I've seen tons of times, and I've run into it, I'm sure you run into it where you get stuck in a corner, there's tables in front of you and the dance floor is way far away from you. And that sometimes can be a headache because you have to play so loud to cover the dance floor. The people in front of you are trying to have a conversation and you don't want to make grandma's ears bleed. Not a fun thing to do. So it, it, it's, it's, it's a horrible thing. So again, I think that's a very smart thing and it's great to have that rapport with a venue. Uh, so the, the other question to go is, is, What's your worst outlet story? And it could be either Georgia or uh, up in Wisconsin. Um, I, I don't know. I've had a lot of them. I think ceiling outlets suck. Um, like I said, we do a lot of like Airbnb weddings. So most of those have like on-site pavilions. And it's always an outlet in each corner, usually in the roof. And then you're stuck with either one setting up in the corner or if you're trying to go in the middle – then you're running cords halfway down whatever the pavilion is, down the wall of it. Um, but loose outlets, I think loose outlets are the absolute worst. That that annoys me when you can't even keep a cord in your outlet and you got to tape it up. Hey, I, I wish, you know, I, I wish my father-in-law was uh, still alive because I would love to bring him with uh, because, again, being a, a electrician, a union electrician, he, had, he knows what code is and have him just come along with 
sometimes. So he has an outlet to swap an outlet out real quick because he could do it no problem. He's a electrician. And again, I, 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 I can be dangerous with electricity, but I don't want to, you know, do something like that. Versus him, he knows what he's doing. He knows what the rules are, the law is, and stuff like that. And swap an outlet out. Be like, hey, you know, swap that outlet out. I'll pay for the outlet. The outlets are, you go to like Home Depot or Menards or Lowe's or whatever, you buy a, a nice quality outlet. It's not outrage, outrageously expensive to replace the outlet. And, you know, swap it out for him. Just, you know, take care of it. But unfortunately, he's not with us, you know, physically. But I always hope that, you know, the facility sees that and says, hey, we're going to fix this for next time. Um but, you know, I know you said you do a lot of Airbnb. When you were up in Wisconsin, uh, especially being in the Midwest, a lot of barn weddings, which you run into. Yeah. And some people have barns that are still barns. And they go, oh, well, you know what? We're going to throw make it a wedding venue. And they also need to stick outlets in places where they shouldn't have outlets. It's like, wait, how did your, either your county or your city or your municipality around here allow you to have that outlet there? It is like some questionable stuff, and I'm sure you've seen that up there. Do you see that same yeah. stuff down in out down in Georgia, or yeah. it's, you think it's worse than Wisconsin? I, I think Wisconsin was worse as far as that. Georgia, they're either most of them are built for weddings. There are some bars that have been repurposed, but most of them have been built specifically for weddings, or they're verbos, and even the verbos are usually built these days to host events. The ones that do uh, Wisconsin, worst one I ever had. Like, this was a crappy, rundown barn, like, holes through the slats of the wall and stuff. And they could only have one element, like, one thing hooked up to each outlet or their circuit circuits would pop. So, like, even, like, not so much for me for DJing. Like, most of our stuff isn't drawn that high of power. I wasn't doing effects or anything for that one. Uh, but they are doing, like, um, Nesco's. And they literally had to have Nesco's spread out all over this venue to not pop its circuits. And so yeah. cro basically crock pots all over the yeah. place and heat and, you know, the hot tubs that hold water to put a, uh, you know, a tub in to hold natural cheese or whatever it is it's for people yeah. to eat out. You make tacos or whatever. Yeah. That that's, that's, that's not good. That That is not good for having your, your kind of like your, uh, your warmers pop in the yeah. circuit breakers. They don't draw a lot of power. So that says that, yeah, the electrical is not good. How many people here, I want a quick show of hands, how many people here have had a circuit breaker pop on them at a wedding? Yeah, that's that's not that's not fun. That's not a fun day. It seems like Dwayne doesn't have uh, much electrical problems where he's at. He's got some great gigs. Then you know, I'm I'm kind of jealous because he has great outlets. It's because he's running evolves. Run some real speakers, and then you'll have issues. What do you mean? What's not the wrong running evolves? I've I've you know I've never had an issue with a circuit breaker or anything like that. Because you're not. <laughs> oh, sorry. Heavy stuff. Hey, Watch I language. Hey, I I caught it. Whatever. Uh, I'll get it out. I'll get it out. You need but, to uh, those devices. The the kilowatts will help you because then you could really see how much you're pulling. With me though, uh, like my sparklers have a smart CPU or something in them that if there's too much being plugged into the circuit, they will limit themselves so that the circuits don't pop and everything else will still work. And they'll just you know only shoot out a quarter of the way up or half the way up or they just won't, you know, reach temperature. Um, but there's those kilowatts help. I always try to spread my stuff out, but uh, I never really try to... I've run a whole two speakers, two subs on one circuit before and been fine. Uh, it's not ideal, but... You know, the only, you know, the only problem I had was that a festival at uh, Christian Academy, I had to share an outlet with a can, like a cotton candy maker and the person actually actually turned off the outlet and turned all my power off. And I was so mad. And this person said, calm down, calm down. I'm not going to calm down. You turn my stuff off. That, that's very, uh, very, very troubling. Who else has had uh, to share power with another vendor and had their stuff turned <laughs> off by accident because of your circuit breaker or the vendor turning off your power? <laughs> I know Hunter. Yeah. Oh, they're all oh, there. There we go. We got the way on that one now. <laughs> yeah. It's always fun when some of the venues when they plug in a coffee maker 
and you're like, oh, we're done with the coffee maker, and they flip a switch somewhere, and all of a sudden you lose your power. Like, hey, what happened? You know, <laughs> that's not fun. <laughs> so, uh, Matt, I know you don't like the uh, Evolve fifties or the any line array standard speaker, which most us mere mortals use. Uh, now when it wants to do dual twenty ones and uh, huge speakers to blow people away. Uh, the question is for you, because I'm going to do a different question for you. When are you going to start getting some line arrays and hanging uh, speakers in and start running everyone very hot? Uh, um, I don't. I feel like I don't need that. Like, I hardly ever take my NXLs out, and those are a column array, but like a real man column array speaker. Um, and I'm I don't a real really man. Need you know um you're 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 here, here's the thing your little column arrays that all you guys use it's a passive speaker that's powered by an amp inside the subwoofer okay uh so yeah they're convenient and they work and whatever but they do not get anywhere near loud enough for the level that i like to play at um and i don't think they ever will until they come out with something that's an 18 inch sub and just a beastly you know top part and so i had to make my own which is what the nxl is which is its own speaker um and it's uh i hardly even use those um and then when i was at the ritz massive venue 200 plus people uh you saw the, the size of that room like i have my dual 18s with the the ig4 t top so i'm basically doing like a column array but it's my version you know with a more power than you could get from something that only takes one plug um is really what it is but i don't think i need to get i don't think i'll ever be at that because i've done six or seven hundred person school dances no problem with two dual 21s like, again two I, I could see dual 21s or dual 18s for six or seven hundred people but when you have a hundred people for a wedding right. I, I think a dual 21 might 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 just just might be a little strong for that the, the dual I'll, I'll say this the dual 21s are overkill for a small room um that's where the dual 18 comes in even dual 18 it might, might be a little strong for a hundred person yeah. wedding. You know, yeah, it's not, it's not the loudness or like the amount of bass. It's just how clean and how deep and how it stays balanced when you turn it up. Cause usually your speakers will run away from your subs um, or you just don't have a loud enough system in general. But uh, like those single 18 subs can only a single 18 can only push so much air. And when you have a large space, you really need a pair of those to push more air, and two single eighteens are not louder than a single double eighteen. It's just, I, I think maybe, um, I, I mean, I've seen some of the professional audio equipment uh, uh, companies do stuff uh, with uh, two forty outlets, and they run a two forty to a uh, power unit, and then they run power out of that for their system. I think maybe sir start looking at that that way you know 100% you can have all your 18s and 21s and well, all the tops I'm, and not to worry about popping things cuz that's around that's around some high power you know when you run an 18 a 118 sub that draws some big power but when you're running you know four or you know four or 21s that's a lot of power just in, in, in just in subs and you you just said you just, beforehand you had a little problem with a venue that the power went out on and that that kind of stinks because you don't want to do that, and you want stuff to sound good, and plus you don't want to damage your own gear. That's that's the other part. You know, uh, me, myself, and Tracy, uh, I don't know about anybody else here, but moving a 21-inch sub, those are not light. Those are kind of heavy, and, you know, it's, 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 it's again, I know you just got a new vehicle for that. I could I could push them into my van by myself. Do you get a ramp for your uh, van yet? Yeah, I, I have a I have an eight-foot uh, portable ramp, but it's uh, 31 inches wide. So, because the most of the ramps you see are 29, the sub wheels are exactly 30 inches apart. So, um, I have a special one that it took me hours to find on Amazon. Because once you get past six feet or five feet, like finding a, a big ramp that's that wide is very hard. They don't make like 10 foot ones, at least on Amazon. I'd have to custom order it, but I don't want something that's like attached to the van. I'd rather just have, you know, something I could move in and out when I need it. Um, well, and that that's people. the other, that's the other thing is that you know I I, I kind of look at ramps once in a while too for my van. I, I do like the idea of, of like a full length ramp across the back of the van, but like I also don't want it like attached to the door. Like I don't I don't know. Um, and those are expensive, man. Those are thousands of dollars. Like I don't I feel but like. But the I, thing is that again, you 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 do that. You also do a hydraulic lift too in the back there. You know, people. people I don't do need. That. To, I'm not. 
I'm not keeping this thing forever. Like this, this is doesn't this, matter. This is like... It's a, it's a tool. You, you feel you get the tool ready and you have it working. You do what you do what need you need to do for the tool. And that's, that's the thing. When you look at yeah. a business vehicle, it's a tool for you to, for your business to work and to transport gear. So it makes your life simpler and easier. You're not going to hurt your back. That's the important part because getting hurt mm -hmm. is not fun. But I yeah, also want to maximize it makes your life simpler. Maximize resale yeah. value. When you start customizing it, it makes it a little bit trickier because then it was made for a specific purpose. When it's not, then it's just like every other cargo van. So whenever I trade it in, if I ever trade it in, then uh, you know, I don't want to have to pay to have all that stuff removed. Um I don't know. Whatever. I just spent fifteen thousand as a down payment. I'm not ready to spend another couple thousand yet. <laughs> that's nothing. Fifteen thousand. That's nothing. <laughs> the chunk. I'm making my. I'm making my monthly payments with interest only, though, from uh, from my savings account. So there you go. Do, do always have your money work smart for you, uh, Taylor. You uh, you had a, something to say, or I'm sorry, Jordan. You had something to say. <laughs> I, uh, I said uh, EV fifties also make your life easier. Yeah, no, they also I I've heard hey, them now. Hey, I was hey, at DJX. Uh, I heard them at DJ Expo. They sound terrible. Uh, they uh okay. sound terrible. They, they I wouldn't use the word terrible, but I did get rid of two eighteens and like I I I miss I don't miss the two eighteens until I turn the EVs on and like try to use them. But like carrying the EVs, I don't miss the eighteens if that makes yeah, sense. Sure. And I'm I think like there's there's been times where I've been like wow, this dance floor, this setup would have been perfect with like something like a 44 G2 because obviously I need more volume than an EV50. But I've thought like, ooh, you know, some portable column array like a 28 G3. That's why I asked Jeff about the 28 G3s once or twice, like, or G2s or I've, somebody, I don't know. Like I could see where it would be useful. But the other part of it is I have enough subwoofers. I don't need, and it's also four pieces. Like two speakers and one sub is three pieces. Otherwise, you're doing four pieces, two subs, two sets of tops, like four bags. I don't know. To me, it just sounds like more work. Um, I get it. It's one plug. It's one cable. It are are you are easy. you using gravity stands? Or are you uh, using knockoffs? Depend. Uh, they're all gravity stands, but whether or not I use them depends how much the client pays. <laughs> you know, if you have if, if you have your uh, speakers on gravity, I think those are more attractive than the standard stand with the the regular you know tripod leg. Yeah. I either I either higher, always do more like, action. Like, if if I'm not yeah I don't I don't ever have visible tripods um, but I will like put tripods behind like my facade but all you see above the, the facade is just a single pole if I if I'm using a different facade uh, or that like fancier booth and we're not using dual subs then yes I'll have like uh, a gravity stand for one of them but like those gravity stands suck like the speaker stand gravity stands no matter how little amount of weight unless it's like a thump go they wobble like crazy they uh i mean your speaker's not gonna fall because the base is like 45 pounds but it's it's just not as it's not as secure as you would hope for it to be let's just say that the k&m oh. ones though i might get the k&m ones i saw those at dj expo those are really nice you said k&m yeah, they make their own version of like a, a round base speaker stand, and theirs is a little bit more sturdy than the gravity. Uh, well, when you run uh, three thousand horsepower off a speaker, I could see the speaker going back just from volume, from sound levels, you know, from sound waves. <laughs> so okay. I'm going to go over to Dwayne uh, <laughs> and talk to Dwayne. Dwayne, I, 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 when you do a setup and you walk into a room. And you look at uh, how the room is uh, again for your setup. Do you figure out how to do the set beforehand through pictures, or do you go there a day of and say, "Okay, fine, great, this is how I set for this event"? No, I try to um, get a heads up um, of the uh, venue area before I get there. So I either talk to the client or go out there and at least take a, a look around. If I can't do that, then I'll. Uh, look at pictures and, and everything so at least i know what to bring and then i try to um preset everything up like the night or the day before so it, it makes it easier for me to um to be able to go in set up and get out without carrying a bunch of extra stuff that i don't need and you know the, the one of the things I, I know that um you know, some of the weddings you had, like uh, one of the parties you had, you had to go downstairs and stuff like that. You knew about the stairs before going to that venue, right? Yep. The, the pizza restaurant. Yep. That's the one with the um, outlet that's at the top of the... Um, it was near where they they had a like a um, video projector. 
So it, it was in the ceiling. See, and that's, okay. that's always fun. You're trying to plug it. Did you have something on a chair to plug into it, or was it low enough that you could actually put your arm up? No, I, I stood in the chair. But the thing was, you had this ugly wire hanging down. It's like, there's no way you can, like, cover that. Yeah, it's, it's, it is what it is. And it's like, I much <laughs> rather run an extension cord. And, you know, again, not a light, little white extension cord for Christmas lights, a nice quality extension cord like Jeff has, and run an extension cord along the base of baseboard to an outlet, then hang one from the ceiling. But some of these venues, I, again, it's like, how do you do this? How do you not, again, hire a electrician and, you know, get, you know, an electrician to come in and do the right thing and run some conduit and run some wire and actually give the DJ its own separate uh, circuit, too. That would be a nice thing as well. And when I run to certain venues, um, there's a couple of them. They put the DJs always in one spot next to the dance floor. Smart. But they actually have outlets out there, um, and they have their own two circuit breakers. Uh, there's one venue I have. They have four outlets, um, so it's four dual outlets. So you have total, you know, of eight, uh, not eight, uh, two, four, six, eight, eight. I'm sorry, eight total plugs you can plug in. But each four set of outlets, each four set of plugs, is its own circuit breaker. So you have 20 and 20. You have 40 amps of power to play with. Now, for Matt, that would be great. Something like that would be help him out because he can run, you know, half the system on one half, the other half on the other half. Uh, but for us mere mortals that uh, have, you know, uh, Evolve 50s and J J8s and stuff like that, I, I run into one half, one one of those plugs, and it works great. Or even when I use my Maui 5s, it works great, too. Uh, one other thing also... Um, if you guys haven't done so already, I have a video up on YouTube for the uh, Percon uh, Power Pack. Very, very cool thing. I unboxed it, and I also used it this past Saturday for a gig outside. It was a uh, a little event, and uh, 2,200 watts is a max it puts out, which is not going to run you know, a bunch of dual 18s, but will run normal speakers. I had it running from 6 o'clock in the evening. We started playing really music at 6.30. I was playing around, doing stuff beforehand, playing some music testing at like a little after 6. So from 6 all the way till a little after 11 o'clock when I shot the end video, um, it ran totally off of that. So I didn't run the batteries on the Mauis. I didn't run anything off a of battery. Ran everything off that Pecron, and it ran flawless. It was great. I still had 31%. Of the battery, which I got to go tomorrow, grab it out of the van and charge that puppy for this weekend because I have a wedding outside that the venue does not have working outlets outside. So it's like, okay, fine, great, no problem. But if you're looking for a power solution, anyone here in the panel or anyone watching, I would definitely recommend the Pecron. It's not cheap. It's $700 for the unit I got. It's 2,200 amps. It holds a lot of power. And I have to thank uh, a, a very special YouTuber, and actually there's two of them. Uh, it is the Sound Couple. If you guys have not saw them on YouTube, uh, they're a great, great team. They're a husband and wife team. Uh, they do professional sound. They will be coming on to the show in September. We're trying to figure out what day exactly. Uh, but when I know what day, you guys will know. They're awesome. Uh, and uh, Bart and Stacey are just great people. Uh, I like watching them. They, I learn a lot from them because they do professional sound with arrays, with 18s and stuff like that. And they do sound for bands and they do monitors and all this other fun stuff. So they get in and they're going to be here to answer some audio questions and I'll answer some questions how we as professional DJs can work with a professional sound company like them and you know how we make things easier for each other. And that's that's a great thing. It's teamwork that helps everything. Um Really quickly, uh, what we have in the last few minutes here, I want to go through a few uh, things over here. People were saying, and I'm sorry that I hadn't <laughs> read anything. Um, let's see here. Uh, where are they? Uh, I had them, uh, let's see here. I had them up on the wall. He's talking about outlets. Uh, Adrian E. had to borrow a 12-foot ladder to get pl to plug into a ceiling outlet. Wow, that's 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 bad. Uh, the worst outlet in the room is they have uh, worst outlet is no outlet in the room you had to uh, sit up in. Um, 
Remember, uh, if you go to the venue's website, they have photo shots professionally. So you have a good photographer who will take everything, looks make everything look sweet. Uh, that is very true. Plus, a lot of venues, and I'm sure you guys seen it as well, when you go to Google Maps, you drop down into the venue. They have a 360 camera. That you actually can circle a room and circle around in the venue and kind of see a pathway. Um, I always like that because I can figure a pathway from the door how to get into a, a venue or where where the bathroom is at. Because how many times do people ask, hey, where's the bathroom at? Or where's the bar at? You know, you can see the bar, you know where it's at because you kind of see stuff. But people may not know. People will ask and they ask you, hey, where's this? Where's that? You can kind of get an idea beforehand. Uh, plus, also, it's quick, you know, a quick exit to get to the bathroom, get back real quick, at least you can continue your work. Um, let's see what else. Uh, remember, let's see here. Definitely a lift gate. Yep, that's what uh, Mike says. Definitely a lift gate with those nice big huge speakers. Um, uh, put some fake vines on it. <laughs> that's from Kevin. Uh, put some fake vines, I guess, on the speakers. Um, my problem is some outlets are worn out at venues. We were just talking about earlier. Uh, yeah, that I had uh, a couple weeks ago a venue that I had put the prongs and made made it basically a V to fit into the outlet so it didn't slide out. So that was not fun. Um, go and go back to you, Alex, real quickly. Uh, when you do uh, bilingual events, and I'm going to ask the rest of the crowd for this one as well. When you do bilingual events, do you try to balance between the two uh, parts, like the English and the Spanish music, and try, do you try to do like 50-50 or 20-30? I mean, 30-80, you know, 70-30? What, what do you try to do for for music balance so you get that right balance so you have both sides out there having fun and enjoying themselves together? Um, I usually do 50-50. Um, I go, um, I, I mix quite a bit, um, and I usually go between genres every other song. Um, so I had a, a couple, uh, a bilingual wedding uh, a couple of years ago that the aunt of the bride, she's Caucasian and he is uh, from El Salvador too. Uh, so I was start playing and then I went into my regular uh, mix, you know, like uh, I did country, then I went into hip hop then I started doing a little Hispanic music and then went back into uh, English music. So at the end of the night, uh, the uh, the groom comes over, gives give me a huge hug and he's like, I got to share this with you. I was dancing with my wife's aunt and she was telling me that uh, she asked me like, hey, uh, this is the longest song ever because, you know, we've been dancing for like 12 minutes and the song hasn't ended. And I'm like, uh, he said, no, well, we he played country, he played hip hop, he played some cumbias, and then went into some uh, Mexican music and stuff, and then went back to to uh, to English, and she's like, that was not one song. So I, I usually try to do, you know, uh, two and two, uh, and and mix between genres just to try to cater to everybody. Uh, at the end of the night, um, I just read the crowd, see who's dancing. And then um, I usually ask that to the couple, okay, do you want me to, to read the crowd? Do you want me to play to the crowd? Or do you want me to keep it a strictly 50-50 or whatever percentage they choose to? And 99% um, of the time, they're like, just read the crowd. So I, I usually tend to play a little bit more of, uh, of the, uh, the crowd that's dancing to try to keep the dance floor uh, full. But uh, usually it's just, you know, whatever the the uh, the couple wants. Yeah, and that, I I I try and do that too. Especially, uh, I've done mixed weddings with Hispanics, and I try to play stuff depending where they're from uh, to make sure it's enough there. Uh, I had actually a groom; he was from uh, Colombia, and they have uh, um, uh, oh god, I can't remember the phrase of it. Tracy would know off the top of my head, but it's the crazy hour. It's kind of like car. Uh, Laura Loca. Yes, thank you. Uh, my Spanish is very poor. I don't want to try and, <laughs> and say the wrong thing. Um, but the thing is that uh, he had a crazy hour. We did it for an hour of Spanish music. Uh, it was mainstream Spanish and some Colombian songs I had to get. Um, but it was like popular stuff that was mainstream throughout South America and through uh, Central America as well as European Spanish. So it's more like 
wider cast and, and uh it would be it would be popular anywhere and they had fun doing that and that was also they would invite uh, they would other people up there but also she wanted a few english songs thrown in there uh so that way mm -hmm. other people hear it and like oh yeah it's not just straight and it was it was fun it was when you work yeah. with a couple like that it's always fun anyone yeah. and, and, and if okay. i can add one one thing on on bilingual events you know i I understand that a lot of people they 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 like uh, well yeah I can I can do that I can DJ a bilingual event because I know how to play Despacito or I know how to play Macarena and stuff like that you know it it's more than that um, I I have had a a lot of people reach out to me asking like hey you know I have a, a Mexican wedding what what are the go to songs I'm like well Mexico is a huge country. You need to understand that every region likes different type of music. Even though it's Mexico, it, they have different tastes in music. So you cannot play the same music that you play for uh, uh, the capital area to the, the Bay Area because they are completely different. So um, my, my advice is like, if you want to do it, go ahead and do it, but make sure that you do your homework and that you understand uh, from the heritage of the couple, because even Caribbean music, you know, uh, if you play the wrong the wrong song, or if you don't play a, a full salsa song for a Puerto Rican crowd, you might get stabbed. So, just <laughs> you know, because they they're very particular to to their music. So it's it's you know it it, it it's important for you to do your homework. So if, and, and if you guys ever ever have a question, just reach out. Thank you so much, Alex. And I, I think that's a big thing is doing your homework, talking to the, a couple, finding out where they're from. Because you even have people who are from like Texas and California, and they have their own Spanish music that's kind of like a cross between traditional uh, Spanish music, bandia, cumbia, and then they have a lot of American influences in there. Yeah, so you have yeah, that, uh, you know, you have stuff that you have a very, very wide swath of different music. And even like European countries, you get someone who is from Italy or Poland or Germany, they have different areas in same kind of thing. One area has one kind of music, another area has another kind of music. So work with your clients and find out and ask questions. If you're not sure, hey, you know what? Give me some, give me some artists, give me some titles. Again, I'm running this right now with a couple uh, she is uh, Pakistani. Uh, he is Pakistani descent. He's been, you know, multiple generations here. Uh, we're doing their wedding coming up, and I want to make sure it represents what the two of them want to have. So I have this huge list of music that I have. I actually want download. She listened to songs. We spent some time here on on Zoom and make sure I had the right song to have her help me pick songs out. And that's, if you got to do that, that's fine. Great. Send some time with your couple because it's going to make your wedding, your event, your party, anything you're doing successful. And it's going to make you a leader in the area, especially if you're going to work with other couples other than English speakers, you know, and again, that can be anywhere from our world. Just make sure you understand the culture a little bit. Ask questions. You're not asking questions to be made. You're asking questions to be knowledge in it. So that way you understand when someone comes to ask uh, you something, you can do it. You may not be able to speak the language, but you can have them dance and have a fun and enjoy the party. Yep. Well, wow, the hour goes by so quickly, especially when you have some great uh, stat, uh, great people here and great stuff going on. Uh, you know, it's the, the stats always say the same thing is you guys out there, when I look at YouTube, I, I see you guys out there watching it. Just make sure you subscribe and make sure you listen to the whole video. Lots of nuggets of information here. Lots of great stuff. So please do that. And then uh, we're going to have tonight, um, I'm actually going to have, uh, have Jeff take us out tonight uh, for his send off. So uh, Jeff, you want to close out the night for us? Sure. Thanks, everybody, for coming and visiting uh, the DJ Roundtable show. I hope to see everybody back here next week. And until then, have a great week. Hey, Sal. Good night.